Hey, welcome back to the channel. Today, let's take a look at a few of my favorite single action revolvers. Ever since I was a kid, watching movies set in the Old West held special interest for me. Later on, I found myself researching this style of revolver, and the more I found out about them, the more fascinating they became. By the way, all of the cap and ball revolvers we'll be looking at today are reproductions. Over the years, I've collected a number of them and found that I really enjoy shooting them, black powder revolvers and cartridge revolvers alike. So today, let's revisit some of the single action revolvers that reside in my collection. And how about we start with the 1851 Navy? Although you'll occasionally see 1851 Colt style Navy revolvers chambered in 44 caliber today, they were never originally produced in that caliber. Classic Navy revolvers have always been 36 caliber. The 1851 Navy has always been regarded as one of the more accurate cap and ball revolvers, and that's probably why it remained popular even after cartridge revolvers appeared on the scene. Although not exactly period correct, these two modern reproductions are truly a hoot to shoot. They're both 44 caliber revolvers based on the 1851 Navy. This one has the standard length 7.5 inch Navy barrel. The other has the shorter 5 inch barrel, often referred to as a sheriff's model. The fluted cylinder on the sheriff's model will eventually become standard on just about all revolver models we see today. Like I said, they're not period correct, but I sure like shooting them. In 1860, Colt introduced their Army model, chambered in 44 caliber. It quickly became a favorite with military and civilians alike. In its day, the Colt Army was a rather potent proposition. It's capable of launching a 44 caliber bullet at around 1100 feet per second. In my opinion, that's still pretty powerful even by today's standards. Colt, 1860 Army. 44 caliber. Anybody who don't think a Colt Army will get her done better think twice. A smaller version of the Colt Army was introduced in 1862 for the police and civilian market. This five shot 36 caliber Colt Metropolitan Police turned out to be a relatively popular revolver, mostly due to its concealability. The actual size of the Colt Metropolitan Police is a little bit hard to distinguish until you set it right beside a Colt Army, and then the size becomes really obvious. Remington revolvers were also quite popular. Many regarded the Remington style revolvers as being better constructed or stronger due to having a framed stiffening top strap over the cylinder. By the way, Colt will eventually adopt this construction feature in their later models. Anyway, these Remington revolvers were also chambered in 31, 36, and 44 caliber. Like the Colt, 
They were often referred to as the Remington Army and Navy, respectively. In spite of Colt having the spotlight in history, Remington revolvers were actually quite popular as well. 1856, Remington Beals patent, 31 caliber pocket revolver. 1861, 36 caliber. Yeah, buddy. In 1873, Colt introduced their trademark revolver, often referred to as the Colt Peacemaker. It would eventually be produced in a wide variety of calibers. My favorite, of course, is 45 Colt. The transition to cartridge revolvers really put a damper on the popularity of cap and ball revolvers, mostly because cartridge revolvers were quicker and simpler to load. Remington followed suit in 1875 by releasing their own style of cartridge revolver. Although not quite as popular as the Colt, the Remington certainly had its fair share of admirers. This one's chambered in 357 Magnum, which was actually not a cartridge available back in the 1800s. Nevertheless, shooting 38 special cartridges loaded with black powder closely replicates the 38 long Colt route, which was available at the time. Although these cartridge revolvers are quite capable of firing modern smokeless powder rounds, I like loading and firing my own period correct black powder cartridges. 1873, Colt Bird's Head, firing authentic black powder cartridges. more fun than you can shake a stick at. I uploaded a video a while back going over the steps I use to go about loading my own black powder cartridges. If you've an interest in seeing that, I'll leave a link to that video in the description box below. These two single action revolvers are of completely modern design. Both are Ruger New Model Blackhawks. This 7.5 inch barrel Blackhawk is chambered in 45 Colt and I couldn't even begin to estimate how many rounds I've fired through it over the years. Those of you who follow my channel know that I'm a huge 10mm fan. This all stainless black cock is of course a 10mm. Other than being a 10mm, the thing that I like most about it is it doesn't require those pesky moon clips. In another video, I demonstrated how I like to load this revolver using a 10mm auto magazine. Although I don't consider this method speed loading, I found that with a little practice, I could load this revolver rather quickly. I hope you enjoyed this topic and share my interest in historical revolvers. If so, let me know in the comments section below. Until next time, practice often as you can, shoot straight, and thanks for stopping by.